The top stories tonight in Y News. Amid recent fuel price hikes, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. wishes to expand fuel subsidies to tricycle drivers. The Department of Education aims to conduct full face-to-face -face classes by November. Senators filed their priority bills under the 19th Congress with measures benefiting different sectors. A Spanish fighter jet intercepted an easy jet flight after an 18-year-old passenger faked a bomb threat on social media. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, July 5, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Harleen Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. had his first cabinet meeting today, five days after being inaugurated as the country's 17th president. Various matters were discussed, including how the administration will address high fuel and food prices, driving inflation. Nelmeri Bohok will tell us the details live. Yes, Nel? Arlene, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. shared with the media some of the topics uh, discussed at today's first cabinet meeting. They have discussed the expansion of fuel subsidy and fear free rides for students in LRT2 with the return of face-to-face -face classes, according to the President. Uh, we just discussed that uh, we are going to try not only to continue the fuel subsidies for the transport sector, but to, uh, to um, expand it to include the tricycles, uh, which up to now have not been included. And so we, are, we, we talked about in the Cabinet uh, meeting, we talked about the funding, where it can come from. Libring Sakai continues as is. Yeah, that, that, that continues. Uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to do a, uh, uh, a program for the students. Because if they come in, we will fully subsidize first their, uh, their Pamasai. We'll phase it out because we cannot afford to keep that going. But students will ride for free on LRT2 which is going to, the, uh, going to the university belt. As uh, for higher prices of his staples like pork, chicken, and other, Marcos said the increasing local production of such commodities is his priority. President Marcos also told the media that the Department of Education wants to start face-to-face -face classes in some schools in September before holding 100% in-person schooling in November. In Daisara's announcement that we have a plan for full face-to-face -face by November uh, of uh, this year. Uh, September, we will start a phased uh, face-to-face schooling. Um, and I, that face-to-face -face will end up uh, in early November, I say already 100% uh, attendance ng mga bata. Kasama dyan, we have to talk about also vaccination, etc., etc. EBBM also confirmed he will meet with Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who will arrive in Manila tonight for a two-day official visit. They are expected to discuss ways and to improve the ties between the Philippines and China and to expand the scope of their bilateral relations. And that is our update. Back to you, Harding. Thank you, Nel Maribahok, reporting live. Inflation hit at a faster rate, jumping at 6.1% in June, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA. This rate is the highest compared to the last three years. This brought the average inflation rate for the first half of 2022 to 4.4%. According to national statistician Dennis Mapa, June's inflation uptrend was caused by the high prices in food and non-alcoholic beverages. The PSA also said that transport also contributed to the inflation rate increase. 
However, the inflation rate in June is still within the 5.7 to 6.5 percent range pegged by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Even with the assurance of supply in the global market, the Department of Energy is still uncertain about the stability of petroleum products in the country. JP Duñez explains why. The Department of Energy's Oil Industry Management Bureau reported that the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, recently decided to increase the volume of oil products exported in other countries. According to OIMB Assistant Director Rodela Romero, OPEC ensures a steady supply of fuel products from July through August. Today, oil companies have implied a rollback on diesel and kerosene prices as a result of this action. Ang primary reason dito, nagkaroon ng announcement kasi itong si OPEC class member countries, nag-agree sila na i-increase nila yung production nila ng mga around 648,000 barrels per day. However, OIMB also stated that the price of petroleum products is still fluctuating due to global market factors such as supply and demand from other importing countries. Hindi natin masabi eh, pero kaya nga regular yung monitoring natin kasi talagang nag-swissing, kumbaga sana napaka-volatile or masyado ang galawan sa international oil market. Even with the rollback of diesel, Public utility vehicle drivers are unhappy because it has only a small effect on their earnings. This is because of the previous series of oil price increase which have already reached nearly 30 pesos this year. Palagay ko, parang hindi pa ubre. Kasi napakaliit eh. Oo, tatlong piso. Tapos itataas nila sampo o city pesos. Eh parang wala na nangyayari. Pababa ngayon, tapos dalawang, dalawang beses magtataas. An anong tulong mangyayari sa amin? E medyo nakabawas sa, ano namin, sa pagpasan namin sa taas ng krudo. Medyo nakabawi ng konti. E, pero dapat naman, ibalik na doon sa dating presyo. Para mas lalong matulungan itong mga kapwa driver namin. PUV drivers are still hoping for continuous price rollback of petroleum products in the coming weeks to help them regain income loss due to higher diesel expenses. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the senators of the 19th Congress begin the first round of filing their priority measures. What are their priorities and in which sectors are they concerned most? Let's find out in Harleen Delgado's report. With less than three weeks before the opening of the first regular session of the 19th Congress, some senators have already filed their top 10 proposed bills that they want to be given priority in the upper chamber. First to file was returning Senator Lauren Legarda, being the most senior senator for serving 18 years. Top of Legarda's list are the One Tablet, One Student Act and Magna Carta for public and private teachers. Another returning senator, Jingoy Estrada, also filed his priority measures, including the strengthening of the National Wages and Productivity Commission, Magna Carta for workers and enterprises in the informal economy and Filipino seafarers, and protection to freelancers. Estrada is poised to lead the Senate Committee on Labor. Re-electionist Senator Joel Villanueva also filed proposed bills concerning the labor sector. These include End of Endo or the Security of Tenure Act, Expanded Unemployment Insurance Act, and the 100 billion peso stimulus for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Meanwhile, neophyte Senator Robin Padilla's top bill is the Equal Use of Languages Act. He also wants to prioritize the suspension of fuel excise tax, Mandatory Reserve Officers Training Corps or ROTC, and Divorce Act. The president's sister, Senator Amy Marcos, filed bills addressing issues on various sectors, including Emancipation of Tenants, Pandemic Protection Act, and Citizen Service Act. Marcos, who chaired the Senate Committee on Electoral Reforms in the previous Congress, also filed a measure for a new omnibus election code. Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel will make a priority the proposed measures seeking to suspend the fuel excise tax and value-added tax or VAT amid soaring fuel prices. The lawmaker also filed a resolution seeking to investigate central banks' frequent changes in the Philippine bank notes and coins. Senator Sonny Angara also filed bills concerning various sectors, including health, 
education, economy, labor, and poverty reduction, such as the Exports and Investments Development Act and the Satellite Specialty Hospitals Act. First in the list of opposition Senator Rizon de Veros is sexual orientation and gender identity expression and sex characteristics or SOGI SC Equality Bill. Also included in her priorities are the universal social pension and free dialysis for senior citizens. Meanwhile, Senator Nito Lapid will make the monthly social pension for indigent persons with disability or PWDs a priority in the 19th Congress, while Senator Bongo's list was topped by the proposed Department of Disaster Resilience. Other priority bills of the senator include Advanced Nursing Education and Rental Housing Subsidy Act. The senators will be given two more rounds in filing their priority bills. Harini Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Commission on Audit, or COA, called out the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, over the unused COVID-19 response funds worth 577.53 million pesos. This is under Republic Act 11518, or the General Appropriations Act of 2021, and the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act, or Bayanihan II. The unused funds amount to 14.29% of the total allocation intended for the hiring of 15,510 contact tracers last year, as well as other pandemic-related expenses of the department's regional offices. As a result, unused funds were redirected to the general fund. The audit body instructs the DILG to maximize its allocation through proper planning and timely implementation of its planned activities. Meanwhile, DILG Secretary Benjamin Benher Abalo said that the unobligated amount of 577 million pesos was from the 2021 Appropriations Fund and is still valid for obligations until December 31, 2022. He also assured that the unused funds would be checked and investigated further even if the question at hand occurred prior to his term as DILG chief. Users of Japan's number two mobile carrier, KDDI Corp, were still having trouble making calls after a massive outage disrupted services across the country. Ryuji Sasaki reports why, live. Yes, Ryuji? Good evening, Kath. The major outage happened due to equipment failure during the scheduled maintenance work at a facility in Tokyo. KDDI Corp officials said the staff was replacing a router for its core network when an error prevented the connection of voice calls. Data transmission had largely been restored by Monday morning, but many users are still experiencing trouble with making calls and sending messages. Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary Seiji Kihara said the government was taking the situation seriously. seriously. The major outage came just ahead of a July 10 parliamentary election and had disrupted de deliveries, weather reports, and other services across the country with nearly 40 million people affected. During the two-day outage, KDDI advised customers to use landlines and public phones to access emergency communications. Meanwhile, the KDD Corp said all telecommunications networks have returned to normal after a nationwide system failure. The president of the mobile company also apologized for the major incident. Kath? Thank you, Ryuji Sasaki, reporting live from Japan. In the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has urged the world's largest oil cartel to produce more oil. Therese Longbowen will tell us why, live. Therese? Good evening, Kath. Prime Minister Boris Johnson calls on the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC Plus, to further increase oil production to minimize the country's cost of living crisis. Petrol prices in the United Kingdom surged to an all time high of nearly two pounds per liter, making it the most expensive fuel among the European countries. In the recent meeting with the House of Commons, Johnson mentioned that the country will need a lot more OPEC oil to lower the rising petrol prices. 
there may be some question about quite how much more the Saudis could, uh, could pump out at, at this particular moment, Mr Speaker, but, but there's no doubt that we are going to need a lot more uh, OPEC plus oil. And uh, I think the answer is uh, to continue. The, the UK, is, as you know, Mr Speaker, has uh, strong and productive relations with uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, we need to make sure that the, the whole of the, uh, of the West does as well, and we make that point uh, to the Saudis. But uh, that, is, that is the way forward. They need to produce more oil, no question. In addition, the country's inflation rate has also risen to 9.2%. Members of the OPEC Plus, including Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, have already agreed to accelerate its production, with the UAE at its maximum production. The Saudi Arabia indicates that the country can produce as much as 12 million barrels a day, roughly 1.5 million barrels more than usual. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Therese Ringbowen, for that live report. The United Arab Emirates, or UAE government, has allocated 28 billion dirhams, or $7.6 billion budget, to low-income Emirati families. This is to help them pay for food, fuel, electricity, water, and housing, as well as to help those who are employed, unemployed above the age of 45 due to the rising prices of basic commodities. These benefits will expand to those who are job seekers, regardless of age, for a period of six months. Families with a total income of less than 25,000 dirhams or about $6,800 per month will be supported by the government. In the UAE, however, a large percentage of low-income blue-collar workers are foreigners and will not directly benefit from the financial support. We'll tell you more global stories later, but for now, back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, Kath. Manila Water Services Incorporated will implement service interruption daily starting from July 6 to 31 due to raw water quality issues. Manila customers in Bacoor, Imos, Paranaque, Cavite, Noveleta, Cavite, Rosario, Cavite, Las Piñas, and Muntinlupa City will be affected. Manila recommended that customers keep enough water in containers when supply is available. They were also encouraged to let the water flow out briefly until it cleared. Mainilad said its water tankers will make rounds in affected areas to deliver potable water. Also, its stationary water tanks are installed in several areas. The Philippine National Railway supports the President Ferdinand Bombo Marcos Jr. approved program for free ride to students, even though the cost of the operation of the said railway has increased. Ashok Adapan Jr. details why. Students may be more encouraged to attend face-to-face -face classes if their daily transportation expenses are reduced. The Philippine National Railways explains this as they provide free ride to students from August 22 to November 4, 2022. PNR Assistant General Manager Attorney Celeste Lauta says they are ready to follow the directives of President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Sa atin naman pong uh, student free ride, kami po ay supportive naman po kung ano po ang move ng ating gobyerno. And nakikita naman po natin na ito ay pamamaraan para po ma-encourage na magbalik na po ang ating mga estudyante, ang mga kabataan sa ating face-to-face -face na sistema ng pag-aaral. Attorney Lauta, however, explains that they are currently facing challenges by the series of fuel price hike this year as BNR trains utilize diesel in their operation. Malaki na po ang impact niya sa ating operating cost. Actually po, ito na yata ang pinakamalaking operating cost ni PNR galing dun sa diesel sa yung mga lubricants. They are hopeful, however, that their own fund from other non-rail revenues will be enough to support their operation with a free ride program. Rentals from PNR properties and establishments were included in these non-rail revenues, which also augmented their operation at the height of the pandemic. If their fund is still inadequate to provide free ride to students, they may seek assistance from the government. Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista assumes there is a budget for the free ride program and they may ask the government for additional funding if necessary. Merong, uh, merong budget, no? uh, existing budget. Uh, Pag-aaralan namin kung hanggang kailan ito aabot. No? Although uh, kung uh, kailangan-kailangan ay baka kami po ay humingi ng additional budget. 
The free ride program in PNR is expected to benefit about 1,500 students per day. The PNR management, on the other hand, assures regular passengers that the fare will stay the same despite challenges in their operation. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The first day of registration for the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections in December was peaceful and orderly according to the Commission on Elections or COMELEC. A high turnout was observed nationwide on the resumption of voter registration. The registration began yesterday and will run until July 23, 2022. Maganda po ang aming nakita sa ating paglahok ng ating mga kababayan across all the regions po nationwide. Naging maganda po ang turnout natin, mataas po ang turnout natin. At ang pinakamaganda po sa aming naobserbahan, generally peaceful and orderly po ang pagpila ng ating mga kababayan. Overall registration, the Commission expects an additional 300 to 400,000 eligible voters. Around 66 million people will now be registered to vote in the country as a whole. 23 million voters between the ages of 15 and 30 will likely cast their ballots in the SK elections out of this total. A Spanish fighter jet escorted an EasyJet flight from London to one of Spain's Balearic Islands, Menorca. Mavian Dog will tell us why, live. Yes, Maeve? Kath, Menorca Airport was alerted of a bomb threat on Sunday by an 18-year-old British national on board the EasyJet plane through social media prompting the civil guard to carry out a special operation. As seen in video footage taken by a passenger, the flight was escorted by the Spanish Air Force on the way to Menorca. After landing in Mahan, the plane was taken to a separate area from the main terminal where it was subjected to bomb disposal exports, experts and sniffer dogs for preventive security checks. Protocol was followed until the police confirmed it was a false bomb threat. Disembarking was delayed due to the precautionary security checks and EasyJet thanked passengers for their understanding. The person responsible for the crime has been arrested and is expected to face a bill to cover the cost of the police operation. In another breaking news cath, EasyJet's chief operating officer Peter Bellew has resigned following the growing issue on flight disruptions and cancellations due to staff shortages. Back to you, Kat. Thank you, Maven Dog, for that live report. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi pledges to take measures on climate change following the recent tragedy of the Marmolada glacier collapse. Ruth Bahe will tell us why, live. Ruth? Yes, Kath, the collapse of Italy's largest alpine glacier in the Marmolada mountain was linked to rising temperatures in a direct result of climate change. Sunday afternoon, the tip of the Dolomite glacier broke off and swept away dozens of hikers in a tragic avalanche. Seven people have died, eight were injured, and 14 reported still missing. Search and rescue operations for the missing hikers have been further delayed by thunderstorms. The cause of the avalanche is thought to be the cause by the long heat wave affecting Italy since May this year. Rescuers noted that temperatures at the mountain peak abnormally rose up to 10 degrees Celsius. This, with low snowfall, melted the base of the glacier, according to Renato Colucci of the Polar Science Institute. Professor Paul Christopher Zahn, glaciologist at the University of Cambridge, also noted that catastrophic glacier collapses like the Marmoladas will be more frequent in other mountain ranges as climate changes continue to defreeze the ice. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi has expressed his condolences to the victims and their families and after visiting the scene, pledged that his government will take measures towards the climate deterioration so that Marmolada tragedy does not happen in the country again. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Ruth Bahe, for that live report. Studies show that the risk of foods going bad increases as global temperatures rise. Long-term changes in temperature, humidity, rainfall patterns, and the frequency of extreme weather events are already affecting farming practices, 
crop production as well as the nutritional quality of food crops. Beverly Saison will tell us why. Climate change events such as heat waves, wildfires, and severe storms are raising the occurrence of power outages. These lead to food going bad in homes or stores or while in transit causing foodborne illnesses. Some types of foodborne illnesses include intestinal infections from pathogens such as cyclospora, salmonella, and steak, a common type of E. coli. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, almost one in six Americans acquire a foodborne illness, while around 3,000 die from it every year. During summer months, the number of individual infections increased twice or thrice the annual average. Elena Naumova, a professor of epidemiology in Tufts University in Massachusetts, USA, recommends consulting with a doctor in case of food poisoning. Also, frequently check federal, state, and local health department websites for food recalls during hot months, as well as for more advice on food safety. Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I'm Kat Tumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. The Department of Education was called on by a public historian to restore the history curriculum in secondary education. Janice and Henta will tell us why. To inform young people about the country's history based on facts and actual events in the past, a public historian appealed to the government, especially the Department of Education, to include Philippine history in the high school curriculum. This after actress Ella Cruz remarked that history can be equated to gossip. History said public historian Professor Xiao Chua is evidence-based and cannot be linked as gossip. Kulang lang sa sinabi niya ay yung tinatawag natin na metodo, methodology. Kasi ang history ay evidence-based. At this means kasi by definition, hindi yan confirmed. Unconfirmed. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo makumpirma dun sa nakakita o, o dun sa mga dokumento. Kaya siya nagiging chismis. Now, so kung chismis siya, tapos bigla na-confirm mo na, hindi na sa chismis. Chua also warned the public that movies and films based on historical events are not always historical or accurate to what really happened in the past. Pag sinabi mo historical film, hindi naman totally historical yan. Hindi siya pwede maging historical kasi kailangan sa isang pelikula, maging watchable ito, entertainment. So, kailangan mag-invento ka ng mga dialog, no? may mga bagay ka na poetic na ibabaguhin. Kaya nga may mga ganyan yung nasa sabi. Janice Inhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A former incumbent Agoola Union mayor was defeated in the recent elections by over 4,000 votes. But today, the Comelec proclaimed her as the duly elected candidate. Dante Amento tells us why live. Yes, uh, Dante, go ahead. Good evening, uh, William. In a resolution released by the Comelec's second division, the Paul Body canceled the certificate of candidacy of Frank Ong Sibuma for the mayoralty race. Thus, Stephanie Ann, Ann Irigel Kalungkagon was proclaimed as the duly elected mayor of Agoo La Union by the Municipal Board of Canvassers today. Kalungkagon's opponent, Frank Ong Sibuma, made a material misrepresentation on his COC, particularly on his residency, explains Comelec Acting Spokesperson Director Jandrex Laudianco. The commission had determined that the uh, the said person had uh, committed material misrepresentation, stating that he is a resident of the uh, of the uh, municipality in question, but it had been proven during the he hearings that he was not a qualified resident of that uh, municipality. Laujanko added, though Sibuma garnered more votes against Kalungkagon, but because his COC was cancelled it turned out that he did not file his COC at all. 
Ang effect po kasi pag na-cancel ang COC, it's as if you had not been a candidate at all. Wala po talaga siya, hindi siya naging kandidato. Meanwhile, in an information received by the UNTV News, si Bumas Camp is seeking a temporary restraining order or TRO before the Supreme Court. Some of his supporters remain at the City Hall to show support and appeal to the Commission that the election's results must be upheld. Ang gusto po namin sana mangyari, kung ano pong lumubas sa butuhan, sana po siya nang maging upo ng bilang mayor. Ayaw po namin ay pahintulot na ibang upo kung hindi naman siya nanalo. Ano pong gagawin ng mga tao tungkol sa butuhan kung hindi rin lalabas ang mga binuto namin? William, under the rule of court, any party seeking for illegal recourse can file it before the high tribunal within 30 days upon receipt of notice. William? Yes, uh, thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live. Our Kasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of members Church of God International. Before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 3, it says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the fate of God without effect? And those are the reasons behind the news July 5, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harleen Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. <laughs> <laughs>